Welcome everyone uh, to the webinar. Uh, this webinar is just try to help uh, individuals or families or people with uh, money, um, how to take a step up, how to make a change. This is not a real estate webinar, although that is what I do and uh, what I normally do. This webinar is more about you, uh, trying to, to help you and to fix you. Um, I posted a bunch of pictures on here of my wife and myself simply because we truly enjoy life. And I think there's not enough people enjoying life. And probably the, the biggest reason why people don't enjoy life is the stress load that comes from money. Uh, a lot of marriages, when they are broken up, are often uh, because of money. A lot of struggles, a lot of uh, depression is often because of money. And so I want to try to give some things to try to help you if I can. <clears throat> Just go through some things and give you some ideas uh, that might help change some things uh, and help your future, you know, uh, with money. And I think that's uh, possible. I, I really do. If you want to get out and do the things that are different in life and be involved and have some fun and, and uh, not live the same life you have every day, you're going to have to change something. You know, people always say that doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different outcome is insanity. And I agree with that. But I think sometimes we do the same thing over and over again because we're so used to it. It's, it's our process. It's, it's how we survive or what we do. And so I want to try to give you an idea to change some of those um, things and try to give you a different outlook on some 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 things are just going to be simple. Um, and um, I want to try to make it as, I think, easy as possible. Um, but also, I want to be able folks to be able to share this webinar. Thank you, son. Be able to share this webinar and um, help maybe help someone else out and uh, do good for someone else. So I'll see if I can't uh, give information I hope that that, that uh, builds your future and builds your mindset. I always say that um, being a millionaire is a mindset thing. And let me explain that. If you take a guy that's got a million dollars and you take it away from him tomorrow and then you cut him loose for a year or two, in about a year or two, I don't care what he does, that guy's going to have a million dollars again. And the reason is he has the mindset that I want to be wealthy. So he changes whatever it is and creates different habits that are necessary to go back and, and do it again. Years back, I got divorced and uh, uh, I, hopefully I've learned from my mistakes. And I, I, I'm sorry that I wasn't what I should be as a husband. I was married to a very good woman and uh, had three beautiful children uh, with her. And we didn't agree for a while and everything just wasn't we weren't happy. And <clears throat> so we decided to get a divorce. We're still friends this day. Matter of fact, I have uh, had her uh, husband come stay with me at a hotel in multiple different places and taught them and teach him on real estate so he can do what we do. Um, but I decided I don't want to ever go through that again. And so when I get married this time, I'm going to do the things that I need to do to change me. And I think we're super happy because of that. That doesn't mean everything's good. Man, money's tight. The world's tough. Kids are hard to raise. I mean, uh, we've got uh, four boys still at home. We've got uh, six boys, one girl, and four what we call in Hawaii Hanai children. And uh, we raise those kids, train those kids, help those kids. One of them is here with us is uh, uh, Christopher is his name, Castro. He lives in our front house. Uh, and then my boys uh, have been here working for the past few months, and they go back and forth. Jared is uh, my old, uh, second oldest boy. is going to be moving back uh, here pretty soon with his uh, uh, girlfriend, and that's their plan to, to go. I, I think it is sometimes just having the right attitude that corrects your future that puts you where you need to go. So if you want those changes in attitude, I don't care where you've came from. I don't care what's happened in your past. If you want to make money, have money, or change your position, there's some things that you have to do in yourself and in your mindset to work, make that work. You know, people say, well, uh, you know, um, my dad always said I'm going to amount to nothing. Or, you know, my, my family always thought that I was no good. Or um, everything I've tried, people have said, you know, doesn't work. Um, it's sad that that's the way it is, but truth, if you're not careful, you'll let someone else's opinion control you. Listen, you ought to write this statement down. Someone's opinion of you does not have to become reality. Let me say it again. 
someone's opinion of you does not have to become reality. I don't care what your kids think. I don't care what your parents think. I don't care what your family thinks. I don't care what your boss thinks. You don't have to live what they think or feel you are. You can be who you want to be and change your outlook and your future and your family and your lifestyle uh, with money. I And let me say this. <clears throat> I don't think money, I said this on, a, I think, a, on one of my things the other day when I introduced, I was going to be here. I don't think money makes you um, really any different. And I don't think money is super important, but I think it's probably second to oxygen. And um, if you're struggling in life, if you take the money struggles out, often you can overcome other struggles. I'm not saying be wealthy. I'm not saying be filthy rich. The first two pages I showed you today of my wife and I and my kids and some of the things we've done is not we do them because we're super wealthy. We do them because we love life. If, you're, if your life isn't enjoyable and your life isn't full of laughter and your life isn't fun, change something. Don't Life's too short to be miserable. If you're going to be on this earth and this ground for 70, 90, or 100 years, uh, Terry, the lady that was our nanny, she's kind of still our nanny, but more so a house manager and then uh, runs our mobile home park and assisted living facility. Um, Terry, his dad came this week. He was like 94 years old or something. I mean, older than dirt. Amazing. He's still running around and vibrant. It was exciting to see. He came in from Kansas City to visit. Him and his wife drove all the way from Kansas City. The guy's, I mean, he, he, I, he scares you a little bit about his age. Um, but he's just enjoyable to talk to. But he's happy and he's trying to do something. I want to try to help you. Let me give you some pointers. Here's number one. Successful people are made, not born. Now, you ever heard this statement? He's a self-made millionaire. In my life, people have announced or introduced me multiple times on stage. And many times on stage, they've always said, he's a self-made millionaire. That's, that's a crock. Let, let me tell you what made Gary DuBose a, a millionaire that was not, or a multimillionaire in this case now, but at that time, a millionaire. And what made me a millionaire was not a self-made millionaire. Uh, it was Ken DuBose with a belt. It was uh, Ken DeBose with strict rules in my home. It was my mom and dad teaching me to save money. It was my mom and dad teaching me to manage money. It was my dad teaching me to work. Years ago, I came to my dad and I said, hey, dad, I want to be a preacher. My dad was a pastor. I was raised in a preacher's home. God's called me to preach. I want to be a preacher. My dad said, that's awesome, son. I said, dad, I want you to teach me everything I need to know about being a preacher. And he said, son, I'm, I'm going to make you a man. I'll let God make you a preacher. And I think that's a, if you've met my dad, you know how he is. That's a very successful uh, future for me in that he taught me the things that he did not know by putting me. And we're going to get to this in a little bit, putting me around the people around the people that would change me. I didn't know why he was doing it. I didn't know what he was doing. My dad was raised in Arkansas. My dad's a cotton picker. Um, as he grew up, he became a milkman and eventually he became a, uh, uh, a pastor and a preacher, and the rest of his life until he retired, he pastored. That's what my dad knows. My dad doesn't know a lot about money, although he saved up a lot of money, and his finances are awesome. His house is paid off. He has a great life. Um, uh, he's, he's not a wealthy man or knows a lot about large money, so he couldn't teach me. When I was a kid, he wanted me to be good in business. He put me with a guy across the street from our church uh, that was a... Uh, uh, owned a gas station and said, my son's 13 years old. He's he's a, a whiz at math, which I was. I love math and uh, makes me good with numbers. And he said, my son can work for you for free for two weeks. And if you like him, you hire him. He put me with an electrician, said the same thing to the electrician. The guy whose name was Dave Bernie Electric. I was 14 years old. He said, my son's a hard worker. You work him for two weeks. If you want to hire him, you hire him. If you don't, you don't. Then my dad at night would say, if he doesn't hire you, boy, I'm going to tear you up. You see, successful people are made not born. And if you don't start now, if you have children, I'm going to get to it in a moment, but if you have children, start now. If if you haven't um, been successful so far and you've seen a lot of problems or don't think that you're moving up where you want to move or fast enough, you've got to make yourself. You, you, you've got to work on you. You've got to better you. And, and you're made by what knowledge you acquire, the things that you can get, the things that you can do. Here's the first one. 
Start training young. It seems natural. I was a weird kid. My dad taught me all kinds of stuff, how to look at a cord of wood, how to look at things, how to how to look at jobs. Um, I was a janitor at our, at our Christian school for a while when I was 12. And my dad said, uh, I want these short, these uh, uh, floors to shine. And I'm like, well, Dad, I don't know anything about, about that. And he says, well, here's what I do. I talk to somebody that does it. So what I'm going to do this evening is when the medical center, I can't remember the name of it now. I think it was St. Joseph Medical Center in St. Charles. When you, uh, when, when we get done this evening, I'm going to take you down there. And the guys that are all polishing the floor, you're going to go and you're going to say to them, how do I polish these floors? How do I do this? And my dad started young trying to change me. And, and what it did was it made me the odd guy. When I went to Bible college and uh, went to get my degree in, in psychology, both those times I went, everything I did, uh, I did on my own. My dad did not help me. Nobody paid for it. Um, but how I did that was I, my dad, when I was uh, my summer of being 15, my dad said, son, I want you to go paint at night. You're doing electrical with day burning in the daytime, but you're not doing anything in the evening. You got to work. You try to save up money for college. You got to work. So I work two jobs. I work all day at Dave Bernie Electric. And then at night I go to Ted Pole Painting and Decorating. And my dad put me with Ted Pole Painting and Decorating so that I would learn how to paint. My dad didn't know how to paint. My dad didn't know how to do electrical. My dad didn't know how to build. But he put me with people who could so that I would learn how to work like a man and do those things. So my training started young. I was I was a bit weird to the other kids around me, but that's what it is. Start the day. You are as young as you're going to get right now for the rest of your life. You realize that? This is it. You're not going to get any younger. This is as young as you get. So, hey, start early. Now is your early because it's the rest of your life. My wife and I were talking about last night about setting some uh, marriage goals and what we wanted to do. We constantly read marriage books. We want to be good counselors to other people that are married. We want to be deeply in love between ourselves, even deeper than we are every day. So, uh, we talk about those things. One of them was, let's set some things that we want to do. And we made some suggestions. Let's do this and let's do this and let's do this. And that was our plan. And we set up a plan. Now we're going to work that plan. Um, if you don't decide, I'm going to do something different and set a plan, you're not going to. And if you want to save some money, you need to do it. Little things make a difference. Um, when you're dieting, cutting out just a little bit of stuff goes a long ways. Just cutting out one soda or cutting out one candy or cutting out one, you know, um, certain things at a meal or cutting out your bread and eat less bread and less carbs. When you're dieting, sometimes a little thing makes a huge difference. Um, if you're trying to save money and you say, I don't even know where to start. I want you to do some exercise and start somewhere. You've got to start. Here's the problem with adults. We have worse peer pressure than kids. And if you try to start something new, everybody's going to laugh at you. Let me let me give you one. Um, my wife and I do something fun. We're cheap. I don't know if you're cheap, but we're cheap. And I don't have the way to show you the website or what we do online. <coughs> I can show you on my phone. But this is pretty cool. We like to take dates. I don't know if you're married and you like to do a lot of dates. We take a lot of dates. So I joined something called iSecret Shopper. And my wife and I, like uh, this week it is, there's a boat down in Savannah that goes out on the river for the sunset and you get a dinner. And it costs about maybe $50 or $55, something like that. And uh, with iShopper, we get to go buy two tickets. We go out and take the cruise. We come back and we fill out a little bitty piece of paper, uh, some questionnaire thing on online. And then we send that in. And when we send it in with our receipt, they send us back $120 for going and riding that boat. And I know what you say. You, you say what you want, but I get to do a lot of things for free that other people don't get to do. We've taken trips. We went down to the zoo in uh, um, Jacksonville. We uh, we did one of those uh, dinners where you have a mystery dinner theater type thing. We did that where you go through a room. Um, we've ate at maybe like 12 or 14 places. Here's the fun part. Those who know me here that have been here to visit me and work with me on my team, you guys know I love Parker's. About every week or two, there's a Parker's there where you get five up to five dollars in Parker's if you go in. So I can go in and buy my sodas or buy the boys sodas and get anything that we need, um, case of water, whatever, up to five dollars. And then you fill out their little survey and they send you five dollars. back. I'm telling you, I'm cheap as they come. And uh, I don't know about you, but I, I'm, I'm cheap for a reason. You know, I'm not uh, I didn't get here accidentally. Um, I got here by by planning. And so I use this secret shopper thing. It's just something different. 
and they pay me to go do certain things and check them out. And then they send me money back. And I, I wish I knew all of them because there's a whole bunch of things that my wife and I have done for dates and we didn't pay a dollar. Now we paid up front, but we didn't pay a dollar for those dates. I'm cheap. You got to find some things that work for you. They go, I, I don't know about some of you guys, but um, I never go shop anywhere anymore that I don't look up what I need. That's a larger ticket item online before I go in a store and I make them match whatever crazy price I can find online. Now that might not seem a lot to you, but listen, I buy probably 50 stoves or refrigerators or dishwashers a year. And if I'm saving 40 and $50 a, a stove or a dishwasher, uh, my investors are getting, they, they get a percentage of that. I get a percentage of that. The finder gets a percentage of that. All of us make a little more money because I'm cheap. You've got to find something that will change you. But when you start to change, the peer pressure of those around, you're going to go, oh, come on. Oh, why are you doing that? Oh, that's just silly to do. And if you're not careful, they'll take you down uh, in that peer pressure and, and it, it will affect you. Um, <clears throat> start your, your own change to money thinking. Let me explain that. Money thinking will alter your future now. As I said before, in little things, we uh, we live a long ways from town and we were taking all kinds of trips. And so we've started something new is we have a thing at the house. We write down what we're going to go to town for so that if somebody else needs something. They can do it also or we can get them something or if they're going, they can get something for us. And it's just the money thinking is changing the way you think about little bitty things you do with money or how you do that. Um, come up with some plan. I get tickled. Uh, I have a son that likes smart water. I don't know if any of you buy smart water, but, um, my son likes smart water. He spends maybe $3 on smart water. And, uh, I bring home a big bottle for that. I, the, that I bought two or three of them at a time, uh, from Parker's and I fill them up with well water and our well water is about 98% pure. It's super good water. And every time I drink one of those, I think there's a dollar 29. Now, that might not seem like a lot, but I drink two of those a day, and I probably, uh, seven days a week is 14, and 14 times four is uh, uh, 40, 50, 56. So uh, I'm saving $56 a month by drinking my own water. Now, if I was my son, William, I'd be saving, uh, gosh, I don't know how much, but let's, let's up that by $2 more each time. It's just hilarious. By the way, I went into Home Depot the other day. And to show you how cheap I am, I bought cases of smart water and I'm now selling them. My, I bought them for three dollars and thirty cents. Smart water cases for three dollars and thirty cents on sale, like knock it out of the place. Get this out of here. Sale at Home Depot. I bought a whole bunch of cases and I'm selling to him for a dollar fifty and uh, he's saving a dollar fifty on each one. He thinks he's doing great. What he doesn't know is it cost me three dollars. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm turning around and uh, making um, about $8 off of him uh, every week. I'm enjoying that, by the way. Um, but um, start to change your money thinking. I know what you're thinking right now. That's just horrible. Nope. That's the way to make money. Everything you should do should be a, become a game so that you have that thinking going on in your head. What you've got to do is up your game. You've got to figure out how to go the next. Everybody wants the money. Everybody wants the next step. Everybody wants the travel. Everybody wants all the things that I uh, have ability that God's blessed us to do and they want that, but they don't want to do the things that make that happen that you can change for doing it. I have a friend that, uh, and I'm not, I'm not saying it's not, it's not wrong, any different for me, but I have a friend that drinks coffee and he drinks uh, uh, Starbucks coffee and he'll drink two of those Starbucks or three of them Starbucks a day. That's literally like $15 a day. Maybe only does it like four or five days a week, but still, you know, and I look at that and I go, that's, that's a lot of money. Now, and I drink, I used to drink a lot of Mountain Dew. I've cut down now and don't drink hardly any soda. But man, I used to drink soda like crazy. And um, and, and, I, and I had to stop and look at myself and go, how much money am I saving by not stopping all the time to grab myself a, a, a soda? Because that's what I, you know, I've got to change my game just as much as you're, you, you need to change your game if you want to do it. Make one decision that changes you. That's all. Just make one decision that changes your money. So pick something in your life and say, if I did this, I'd make money. Let me say this. If you work eight hours a day, I don't, uh, that's probably enough money to get uh, enough hours in a day to get wealthy. I, I think you should work 12 hours a day. I think every person here should work 12 hours a day. So if you're working eight hours on one job, you ought to go home and work four hours on some other job. If you're not doing that, 
don't expect to get very wealthy. If you go back and study and you can read books after books or nowadays you can listen. Listen, I listened to a book the other day for the first time. You can listen to books on the, the whole book. I mean, on a uh, uh, cast, a podcast or, or even some of them are on YouTube. And as you listen to them, <clears throat> you're going to find out that these guys work 12 and 14 and 16 hours a day to get wealthy, to get ahead. Now, you want to do what they do, but you don't want to put in the time. You got you got to put in the time. So make one decision. Pick pick this week. When you're done off the webinar tonight, I wish you'd sit down and pin out and say, OK, I don't want you to change everything tomorrow. I'm not going to drink this and I'm not going to eat there and I'm not going to eat out and I'm not going to stop it. Stop it. Just pick one thing first and make that happen so that you are successful on your trek to where money is going to change your life the way you want it to. Just one. That's all. Now, this is going to be hard. But some of you need to change your friends. You need to change your friends. Um, I'm trying a whole different game in my life. Uh, it's a much larger game. We're now doing uh, houses uh, that we've been doing for a long time. I have Brandon Green coming to uh, Savannah and going to start working with me on houses. And eventually, I hope I don't do houses at all. And Brandon does them all. And I'm just doing assisted living. We're trying to take that assisted living game to a whole new scale. So raising three or four million dollars for houses was fun. It was enjoyable, but now I'm trying to go to a next level and I'm trying to raise 15 to 20 to 30 million dollars multiple times a year. And tomorrow we have a meeting for a, a group, a REIT called a Real Estate Investment Trust. I don't know if you guys know what a REIT is, but I, it's just something that we uh, use on the real estate side. And uh, we're working with them to try to change, literally change our life, uh, my and Jesse, Dan and, uh, and Jeff's life. Uh, and take it to a whole new level, be able to buy four units instead of just one or so and work with them to up our game and up our future. And I'm trying to change who I am. So I went and put money in, uh, and uh, did the same thing I did for real estate um, with investors and do some things. And hopefully it works and it goes crazy and, and I'll be excited if it does. But in that, I had to go start looking at different friends that have more money than just a half a million, three million, two million. I had to start looking for people I could hang around that know how to handle 20, 30 million dollars. Uh, my accountant, um, Daniel Green, and I was talking this week about meeting with some people that he is friends with in Temecula that have multi, multi, multi millions of dollars to try to change and up my game. Here's why. I've always said this. If you've never, ever heard me speak anywhere, you've heard this statement. You're the sum total of the top five people you hang around. You look at five people that are in your life the most, five people that you hang out with the most, and that's as far as you will go. I say it all the time. If you're going to play basketball and, you, and you're the best guy on the, on the block, that's about all you're going to do is be the best guy on the block. I used to have guys that uh, I was a youth director and I had guys go, man, I'm going to go and I'm going to be the best baseball player. I'm going to join the Cardinals. We was in St. Louis. And I'd look like, you're an idiot. Because first, your chances of getting the, in the uh, end even try out for the Cardinals is like playing the lottery. And if you get in there and you try out, I got news for you. Your chances of making it because you're the best at your school, maybe, but your school ain't that big. You're the sum total of the five people you hang around. You've got to hang around better, change people. I'm not saying get the wrong kind of friends. I'm saying get friends that understand money so they help you and go where you need to go. It is a journey, not a place. You will never arrive. I will never arrive, no matter how much money I make. Now, listen, let's go back and start this in our life. What would our journey be? I think a cool thing would be nowadays, you can get an app on your phone, and while you're walking around Walmart, you can shoot something, and it'll tell you, that there is a discount on that for 10 cents or 50 cents or 75 cents. It doesn't take you any time, hardly at all, about the time it takes you to take a picture. Now, you'll take the stupidest picture in the world. You'll take the time to do that for Facebook. You'll take 50 selfies. You'll do anything in the world you want to try to make yourself look good on Facebook, skinnier, whatever you do. To, I don't know how you do it, but make yourself uh, on Facebook seem like, you know, because if, if you're on Facebook, you don't really got to be who you are. Right. You can be like somebody else. I mean, you can change completely your name if you want to. And now that's, my friend lives in Hawaii. He's actually from Cuba, Missouri. And so his name is Aloha Cuba on uh, Facebook. And that's how I find him and talk to him was Aloha Cuba. I think that's hilarious. Um, but you, you have to choose how am I going to get to where I'm going? And, and the way to do that is something as simple as an app to this week in groceries. Let's say you save ten dollars. Do you realize that that's $40 a month? I mean, that don't take much. That's $480 a year. If you if you do that for 10 years, that's 4,800 bucks. There's so many things that you can do that is just one, like we talked about before, one small thing that takes you and your family to a whole nother step. 
about maybe four weeks ago, one of our electric bills was a little high, and I went to my family, sat down at dinner. We have we have family dinner every night. Uh, we have devotions every night at dinner, and I don't care who's here. Everybody has devotion with us, and we have family dinner. When all my boys were here and all my kids were here, it was awesome to have just a family meal. This super, we got a, I don't know, my table's like 13 feet long or something. We have this huge table, dining room table, and we all sit around, and it's so much fun to see the whole family together. But one of the things I said is I need everybody in the house to, to, to do something for me. Let's start turning off the lights. And just by doing that, I think it was maybe, maybe that was five weeks ago. But just by doing that last month alone, our electric bill dropped one hundred and twenty dollars. And in my mind, I immediately multiplied that times 12 and said, I've got one thousand four hundred and forty dollars. That's two cruises. And so I think look, my, my kids don't get to go on the cruise. But thank you, children, for helping daddy keep the lights off so that I get to go on another cruise. Uh, it's it's a journey. It's it's something you're constantly striving and doing uh, and going for. Listen, a lot of things are going to happen. Failure is going to happen. We're going to talk about failure in just a few minutes, but failure is going to happen. But failures make your future. First guy I went to talk to about a mobile home park laughed at me. Now you got to remember, I'm 40 some years old at that time, 40, 42 years old, 43 years old. And this guy laughed at me and he said, <laughs> boy, because he's like 80. You don't know anything about mobile home parks. And and uh, you I wouldn't I wouldn't sell you my mobile home park for nothing whatsoever. Man, I went back home. I told my wife I felt like an idiot today. Here's why. And I told her the whole story. And I, that guy made me feel two inches tall. But the guy that taught me said, go again. Keep asking. Keep calling. Keep talking. And I just kept doing it on the phone, calling them, calling them, calling them. Finally, I went to Arkansas where I had bought a trailer and I went to the park. And I said, look. You're getting kind of older. Maybe someday you're going to want to sell this park. I want to be the guy that buys it. And here's what I want to do. And here's how I would change it. And here's the things that, and it wasn't no time at all. That guy sold me that park for no money down, not a dollar. I didn't put one dollar down, not a dollar down. And he financed the whole thing. And he only wanted a thousand a month because he couldn't go over his something for his uh, retirement plan or something. He couldn't go over a thousand a month. And so that's what I paid him exactly one thousand a month and uh, bought that mobile home park, my first mobile home park. Failure plus failure plus failure plus failure equals success. That's the way it happens. That's what it does. You'll have to choose. I'm going to do what others won't do. That's all. What others what others won't do, the time they won't put in, the stuff they won't spend, the little things they won't change. I put an app on my phone this week for uh, my mileage because I don't keep really good track of my mileage. And my accountant says, you don't keep good track of your mileage. And I decided I'm going to keep good track of it. I've saved like eight hundred and fourteen dollars in, in, in this in this week. Just because of the mileage. And when I saw that, I'm like, okay, now I'm keeping my mileage all the time. And uh, I want to change who I am. I have to change and do for money what others won't do because I want to have money. Now, it's not that I don't spend money because I can. Let me tell you, I can spend money like crazy. But I have it to spend because I save it in the areas where I don't really need to have it. Let me give you some problems of being successful. If you start to do at least a little bit of thing, here's some problems that are going to be coming Others is going to be a huge problem. Those who know you are comfortable with you the way you are. If you start to change it, when I started getting this real estate thing, I literally had friends of mine that would say, look, I don't know if you know or not, but a lot of people have failed in real estate. And they name people. One of the people they name is Donald Trump. Failed in real estate. I said, yeah, what you don't realize is he did about uh, $1.7 in buildings in the last year and a half now. I'm not saying he didn't fail and make a big big mistake, and I'm not talking about him as a president. I'm talking about as an investor. But he got back up, and he went forward. Those that are around you don't like you to change. As we started changing, I had a lot of friends that hung out with us all the time. And then we started doing cruises, and then we started doing other things that we couldn't do when we first, my wife and I first got married. And we started gaining more money to be able to do more things and travel and go. My wife spent a, a month in uh, Salamanca, Spain, tra training. All the things we got to do were because I changed. But a lot of my friends begin to say, look, man, this is not for you. This is not your kind of thing. And all of a sudden they were falling behind and financially they weren't able to do the things we were able to do. And we, and we got um, different friends, not better friends necessarily, not worse friends necessarily, but friends of a different different type simply because of where we are. People want you to stay where you are, because if you're the same, they don't got to look at you. Go, look, he made it. He did better than me. He did better than we did. And uh, let, let me tell you how some of those are. If you're a husband and wife team on here, the number one thing you can do is have a wife that backs you. I come home and say some of the craziest stuff. 
I came home last night, laid down beside my wife, and told her I might be buying a go-kart place. And she looked at me like, what? I'm like, yeah, I might be having a part in buying a go-kart place. It's possible. It could be happening. I don't know if it will or not, but I'm looking into it. We're talking to the guy. We're working on it. Now, don't get your thing like, oh, Gary's going to buy a little go-kart place. It's $5 million, just so you know. It's not like we're buying a, you know, some guy's uh, got six go-karts out in the corner. It's a huge deal, but it's making about 13% cap rate, and I think I can do it and swing it. We've got a guy that wants to do it together. If we do it together and I split it with him, I don't have to do any work. I just make sure the money's there and the things keep going forward and this go-kart thing goes good. I'm constantly doing it. Uh, we decided to put a, my wife and I just talked about putting a casino in here in uh, Savannah. And it's a fake casino. It's just for fun. It's just like going to Dave and Buster's and playing and you you don't really win anything. There's no money to make. It's just a fun casino thing. And uh, but listen, you got to have a wife that supports you or a husband that supports you. Uh, and it's hard when those are comfortable where you're at. Parents. I remember when I had to come home one time and I looked at my dad and I remember having to think of my dad. I made this week what my dad makes in a year. Let me tell you something. That's a humbling thought. And I wanted to share that with my dad. I wanted to I wanted just to, to, to enjoy that with him. And I went in. And I was scared because I thought, well, you know, my dad takes everything. Well, my dad's a great guy. My dad's the greatest man that walks upon this earth. It, it, it only beaten by Jesus Christ, as far as I'm concerned. I love my father that much. And uh, my dad walks upon this earth. He's an he's a he's an honest man. He's a straightforward man. And I, I was scared to tell him, Dad, I, I made more last week than you make in a whole year. But I wanted to tell him, be honest with him. I said, Dad, I want to tell you, this is the best week I've ever had in my life. This is the check I got. This is the best week I've ever had. My dad hugged me and he said, son, that's all I ever did when you were 12, 13, 14, 15. I just wanted you to make it. He said, my whole dream, my whole life was to be a millionaire. And I think you're going to make it. My dad was so behind me. He was not one of those people just comfortable where I was. He was with me. Friends will hold you back. Family members will hold you back. Co-workers will hold you back. If you're going to change your life for money in any way, shape, or form, you're going to have to start being aggressive to make that happen. If you're not careful, all of them will tell you what they know. Oh, you can't do this. Oh, you can't do that. And I'm not saying you got to do it in real estate and what I'm doing. I'm saying you ought to do it in something. You ought to up your game tomorrow. I don't care if you go start mowing yards in your subdivision. Everybody on this webinar ought to figure out a way to go start making more money tomorrow than you make today. That's all. I'm not saying to go get rich. I'm saying start something that changes you and takes you where you need to go. If you if you try something and everybody tells you, oh, you're going to fail. Let me tell you, I've had my share of failures. And everybody has. I, I, I like this statement. Failures are the things that make you do it again. If you fail, you get up. But listen, there's a lot of people who have failed and you're in that line. Failure is the opportunity to fail again, but this time more intelligently. Henry Ford. They told him he could not make an eight cylinder motor. They told him this is not going to happen this way in one block. It's just never going to happen. It can't be this way. And he's like, I want to be the oh, it's going to tear up. It's going to pop apart. It just can't happen. And and he did it, by the way. Uh, Henry Ford went bankrupt the first time as uh, I want to say it was in. Uh, trying to think of what the name of it is. It's in Detroit, Michigan. It was like the National Car Company or something. I can't remember what it was. The second time he failed, he got, by the way, the same guy that, that, that backed him the first time, backed him the second time, an investor, believed in him still, even though he failed the first time. The second time he failed, it was called Henry Ford Motors. And then, of course, now the third time uh, he found the guy, I think, uh, from Switzerland or from, I, I, I've been so long since I've read his biography, but he, he um, um, found a guy that would back him and then made millions and became a, a household common name. And the reason was he was trying to figure out how to make a car that the average guy could afford. What a great plan. You know, um, I have, I have not failed. I just found 10,000 ways that that won't work. That was Thomas Edison's statement. Uh, when he was making different things, he said to, my, you know, I fail, I fail, I fail, I fail. And that tells me that don't work. This is the way to do it. I get smarter every time. I think it's, a, it's such a great statement. Success consists of going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. Winston Churchill. If you want to, if you want to be successful, you got to try something. And if it doesn't work, let's say you say, I'm not going to drink any sodas this week. And I'm going to save that $15. And then you save that $15 in the month. At the end of the month, you have 60 bucks. I think that's awesome. Then you take your wife out on a date. 
that's a much better thing than having a soda a day as far as I'm concerned. But if you slip up and you drink a couple of sodas, get back up again. Whatever it is that you're changing, change it for the better. Make it happen. Here's the biggest problem of all. The thing that's going to hold you back is not others. The thing that's not going to hold, that hold you back is not constant failures of your past. The things that hold you back are not failures themselves because there are ways to get up and do it again. The biggest problem of all is this right here. You. I am Gary's biggest problem from being ultra successful. Listen, I got a problem. I got a, I got a beautiful wife. I'd like to stay home every day and hang out with my wife because she's beautiful. I don't want to go anywhere. I just I wish if you could pay me to love my wife, I would die a, a, a wealthy, wealthy man because I'm telling you, I'd put in all the hours in the world. I enjoy being with my wife. We, we love each other. It's awesome. But I got to get out and work. And there's times when I should be working that I'm hanging out with my wife that I should be getting something done or going. Listen, my biggest problem is me. My problem is not my friends necessarily. My problem is not people around me. My problem is not my neighbors. My problem is not my boss. I don't have a boss. My problem though is me. I guess my problem is my boss. No, I think about it. My problem is me. I'm the guy that's got to get over the top. And if you're going to change you, you're going to have to look in the mirror and say, how am I going to do this? How am I going to change me? Let me give you some ways I think you can get there. Educate yourself. You should be getting better and better each day. Let me, this is for people on my team that are on the webinar. This is not for everybody. But people on my team, listen to me. If you're not still educating yourself, watching those videos and growing as a real estate person, you're never going to make it in real estate. You might as well give up. I, I, I love you. But I'm telling you, you have got to decide. On, I've not done it. It's not fault, not fixed. It's not worked. We have a lady that's uh, done stuff with us. and She had a, a, a bad run and something happened and it didn't work out good. And uh, her statement was, I got this thing down. I got this trailer thing down. And she's been very successful with trailers. But she did a house. And the house was one of the first houses I've ever lost money on ever in my lifetime. And I was just sick about it. And uh, and we're going to make it up. It's fine. But she's like, I just can't seem to make this work. And I can figure out what it is. And I said, don't give up. Keep fighting. And uh, we closed uh, yesterday. It might have been this morning. But anyway, we, reg we re registered this morning. Closed, I think, yesterday on a house that she found that now is going to be a super bang up job in Virginia. She did a great job. It is your, you've got to decide how am I going to go to the next level? Don't stop educating who you are. Go back and watch the videos again. Go back and do those things again. Now let's go back to everybody on the call. If you're going to do some, educate yourself in something that will change you. I've given you multiple ideas of things to do from the app that tells you what things are on sale uh, the ability to go in and buy something for a lesser amount because it's on sale somewhere else. Listen, even if I go to the gas station, if somebody's got candy bars for 99 cents and their candy bars are $1.29, I'll say, look, the gas station down the street, there's a 99 cents right here online. Look, and they'll give it to me for 99 cents. It doesn't matter to you that it's 29 cents, but it matters to me because I want to have that money in my pocket. And it doesn't take a lot of time. I'm going to the cash register anyway. How long does it take to show him a candy bar from another gas station? I don't even eat candy bars. That's a horrible example. I'd like to eat a candy bar though. Um, but you got to educate yourself. If you do want to send me a candy bar, I like zero bars. Nobody hardly ever has them. I'm a zero bar kind of guy. So send that on over. I'll mail it to me. I'll go ahead and eat it and pray about it. Um, but educate yourself. What do you need? What are the, is the next step? Hey, look, I didn't put a D on need. What do you need to, to help you get to that next place? Education will help. In whatever, if you're going to play in stocks, you ought to get all that. Had somebody told me, said, I don't know anything about stocks, but I'll think about put some money stocks. I think it was a drummer at church. And I said, Listen, before you do that, go on there. They got a free site that you can play, practice with like $5,000, try it two or three times. And then once you've got that down, then you can make it happen. Educate yourself, get knowledge and understanding. Listen to me, this is huge. There's two things here I want you to understand knowledge and understanding are not the same. You can get a whole lot of knowledge. You can go to college and get all kinds of knowledge in the world, but until you enact it, you don't understand what's happening or you don't understand how to use it. Once you start using it, the, the understanding gets greater and greater of how it works. We put a basketball goal in this week and I told my boys, okay, here's what you're going to do. You're going to dig with this post hole digger till it's buried. And it's going to be the size of that tree right there, which is about a foot circle. Uh, I said, that's, that's going to, you're going to bury that pole. I'm like, dad, well, how do we dig all the way down? 
So it's pretty simple. You just jam it in the ground, you pull it apart, you pick it up, and you throw the dirt out here. And once that's done, and it's all the way down the pole, you succeeded. Well, it took them about an hour and a half, but they dug all the way down, and we buried the, the basketball pole. I went and cut an oak down. I went, I'm, listen, I'm cheap. I went to buy a pole. They told me it'd be $700 for a telephone pole treated. And I said, are you kidding me? I'll go get an oak tree. I went out in my woods, cut an oak tree down, made myself a basketball pole, trimmed all the limbs off. It was a very straight, found the straightest tree I could find out in the middle of the woods that I'll never even know that's there in the first place. I hooked a chain to that thing to the back of the four wheeler and brought that tree up here, trimmed it up, smoothed it up. And now it's my basketball goal. I just saved 700 bucks. My kids wanted a basketball goal and I saved 700 bucks. And hey, I got a used basketball goal off a house we bought that I wanted to take it off because it looked bad on the garage. But the goal was in good place, a good, good shape. So I got a free basketball goal. So realistically, it only cost me uh, six bags of concrete. Um, listen, everything you do like that. Remember what I said? Start thinking the money. Now, here's why. If you think that now this way, today I looked at the books of a $7 million uh, assisted living facility. I went through all the numbers. I looked at what they were. And I was able to do that because I used to do it on the little things. All the little things we're talking about today, I get the opportunity to look and say and decide what's good, what's not good. Read a report by one of my guys, one of my guys that uh, does it with me. He went through and ask all the questions that need to be asked, you know, what needed to be said and uh, went through. So we knew exactly what this thing held. So what we called the, this was a, how we write the realtor. I'm able to do this because I did this with the little things that we've been talking about today. I need uh how many single rooms, number of shared rooms, number of vacant rooms. I need net room dimensions for each room. I need the bathroom dimensions. Um, I need some things. I need to MC. I need to know if their rates are different on each room breakdown. And I go, I got a whole list of things I went through uh, with one of the guys of what we should be doing and what we should be looking for. I trained him to do exactly what I do so that when we go through there and we find it, we realize this place is not worth near what you thought it was. And what you thought was a 13 cap is now about a five cap. Our job is to check that out. How do I know that? Because I started with watching how I can save $10 here, $5 there, $20 there, and got good at learning how to watch money all the time. If you're not careful, you're going to find yourself laid back. My son was going to see this picture. I was saving it for him, and he fell asleep right here on the floor by me. He's this boy that you see in here, of course, this is five years ago, but he's right here beside me now. He fell asleep on the floor tonight. There's no, they don't have no school tomorrow, so he's hanging out in dad's room. And uh, this is him. Uh, as you can see, I, I allow my kids to drink alcohol at any age and uh, get tattoos however they want to uh, and do anything they want to their own personal vehicles. No, that's a IBC root beer, I think, or maybe it's a, it's called a uh, Weathers or something. I can't remember the name of the root beer, but we drink it all the time. And uh, uh, he did all those tattoos from our eggs, dying eggs. And I was going through our egg pictures today and I saw this picture. So I put it on the webinar. If you're sitting back, just relaxing, doing nothing, watching the game, watching the TV, watching the TV shows, and you can't come up with five or 10 minutes to change your life, something's wrong. You, you've got to figure out how to change your life and make a difference. So I'm going to give you three words. All you can. If you're taking notes, this is what I take a note on. All you can. How much should you study? All you can. How often should you read books? All you can. How often should you watch videos? All you can. On anything that has to do with money that will change your life, you should take, take every second. I get tickled because the guys that work for me, when we go to lunch or I'll meet them down. Today I went down, met them, took them to lunch. When I go down and do that or I go hang around them, I have another friend that was at uh, a church today. We put in a church parking lot. And uh, I pulled up and I had a, a video going and it was a friend of mine called Video Influencers, Benji Travis, and uh, called Video Influencers. And he's like, man, do you always listen or watch something that, that changes you? I said, yes, I do, because I need to be a better Gary tomorrow than I am today. All you can. You say, what is that? All you can on everything there is. And here's why. If that's the best you can do, OK. But if you can up your game, like we talked about before, then do it. I don't care how small it is. Do it if you want to change money in your life. Start 
Start making a budget. Start watching what you spend. Start turning the lights off. Start if you would just start doing the things in life. And I'm not miserable. I'm not doing it so that I'm miserable. Um, somebody told me they need to lose weight. They need to do, that, and they started eating. I want to say it was kelp. Was that right? Is that the name of it? kelp? And uh, whatever it is, it was like a different form of grass, as far as I'm concerned. And they blended it up. It was Benji Travis, and we were in uh, Marysville. Something like Mary's Mary's something outside of uh, Seattle, Washington. I think it's called Marysville. And I'm at his house, and uh, Benji Travis is making me a milkshake type shake, but it was all healthy. And I don't think there was any milk in it, and it didn't taste anything like a shake. It was like somebody mowed the yard and put it in ice, and then you drink it. That's what I told him. And I said, dude, I got to have. I'll let you know. There's got to be Marysville. Thank you very much, Carl. There's got to be a way somehow that. <laughs> that you ain't got to eat like that to be healthy because that's horrible. But whatever it is that you're doing to change your life, you need to do all you can. By the way, if you're not doing your best you can right now, if you say, Gary, there's nothing else I can do. This is where I'm at. I'm doing the best I can work an eight hour job to make all the money I can make. I just can't go any further. That's it for me. Then. Okay. I'm for you. But I got to tell you something. If you can do more and you don't, then you're a, you're you're a loser. You should have an R on that. You're a loser to yourself. Let me say it again. I, I don't know. I'm not saying you're a loser. I'm saying to yourself you're a loser. Because if you know you can do more, you know I have more ability to do this. I can make more phone calls. I could do these things, and you are not doing them. The only person you're hurting is you. I, I've got a new business right now. Um, this business is a, a, a kind of like it's a um, multi marketing business. I don't know if you've ever done one of those called MLM, um, but it's that type of business and you have a bunch of products and you teach people how to do it and you build it up. I'm, I've am i bought one of the spaces. Now, let me explain what a space is. When they start these companies, um, at the top, those people get paid the most. Reason being is everybody's under you. So I have one side of me that has millions of dollars on it, literally millions of dollars. If somebody, if somebody earned it and made that happen, they can make a fortune doing this. And I've already spent the money. They don't got to spend the money. I already have it all going. If they would take it over, they'd do it. I'd split it with them 50-50. And I'd do all the webinars and I'd do all the stuff. And I've offered it to three or four people. I'm literally saying that within a month or two months, they could probably be making $2,000 to $3,000 a month and could go as much as five dollars to $7,000 a month. And I would split it with them. But I can't get anybody to do it because nobody wants to put in the time to work. And I'll tell you why. They'd rather sit down and complain of why they don't have money, why they don't have anything in their life, why they're not making it, why they can't pay their bills, rather than I'm going to do something that's going to transform me. And then they get in control of their own destiny. And, yes, I make quite a bit of money, but I bought the position that has one side. One It's called a leg. One leg is full. So I just shut it off and fill up the other leg and everything I do on that other leg pays me every single time I do something, I get paid, but I'll have the time to do it. I can't do it. Tiffany didn't have the time to do it. So we want to partner up with somebody. I've already paid for it and let them do it. You would think someone would jump at that chance, but they don't. And, and this is the reason right here. People are happy with where they are. And some people are just happy complaining. Some people are just happy being negative. You need to work on information. Not how they deliver it, let it go, get trained. What I mean by that is I've been to seminar after seminar, place after place. When I spoke on the circuit and I spoke around with a group called Get Motivated, uh, get Wealth Rock, and then uh, uh, before that was James Smith Series. When I did that, I would watch the other teachers like me. When they were done teaching, they'd walk out the room, out in the hall, or to their hotel room and go away and not sit there. Tiffany and I would sit there the whole time, every minute, because here's what I wanted to do in real estate. I wanted to be every guy that was on that stage. I want to know what every one of them knew. I had a friend of mine named Kevin Reynolds, and uh, Kevin does uh, storage facilities. And at this time, he was doing real estate. He's doing the single family homes. And I wanted to know everything about it. So I would go and eat lunch with him. And every day I'd say, hey, well, let me buy your lunch. And then dinner. I'd say, hey, let me buy your dinner. This is right when I first started a different form of real estate. I want to do something different. Let me buy your meal. Let me hang out with you. And finally, the, about the third day, I said, look, Gary, I'm sorry, but there's a lot of people here. And all of them want my time, and I have to share it with them. I'm like, okay. He says, I really enjoy your friendship, and we're going to become friends. I like you. But I got to share with you. No problem. No problem. That's fine. So we're standing in line at the Bellagio, and he's in front of me with all these people that he's eating lunch with. 
And so the Bellagio guy went and set them. Then he came back and said, okay, sir, how many? I said, well, now it's just one. He goes, okay. And now let me see what I can find. I said, well, if you can sit me by that group that just left and sit me at the next table where I can hear them talk, I'll give you $20. Why? Hold on one second. The guy went over and he came back. He goes, I've just cleaned the table off, sir, and you, you can come with me. And he sat me down and, and uh, Kevin got tickled. I was three seats from him, but I was at a different table. And I just sat and listened the whole time. I want information. I wanted to make it in real estate when everybody else went and had fun, when everybody else went to the pool, when everybody else went to do all the things in Vegas they could do. I wanted to get every ounce of information that I could get. I had another friend at that time I went to the classes with. His name was uh, Jesse Chase, and we're now partners in a business uh, called Jezgar. Get it? Jez, Jesse and Gary. Jezgar. And uh, we do things together on a, on a large scale. Listen, it, <clears throat> if you want to change your life, you got to start somewhere and get it where something can happen. Now, I will now catch C for those who did not get D because you were um, not necessarily paying attention. You want me to do that? Time. I didn't put it in there because you need time. Time is the only thing that makes success work. Time put in is success received. That's it. I was talking to a boy today. Um, he's, he and I are the one that's talking about, uh, well, actually, he's, he's found a house and making an offer on the house, so we're doing that together. But also, he's the one that found the uh, go-kart place. And uh, so he called me today, and we were talking about it, and I said, listen, here's the one thing I can't do. I don't have the time to do the things that you're doing. I need you to do them. And so I, I, I give you a portion of my money that I make that I'd, I that I normally would do myself just so that I have more time. Because if I have five Gary's doing this work, then five Gary's can produce more money than one Gary. That's it. Now, right now, you don't need a new you. You just need to fix the you that you have and up your game and make a future and try to make a difference in your life. Don't give up. Start making that change now. Start doing some things. Every one of you, ought to, when we're off here, you ought to go find the app, two apps. You ought to find the app that gives you... Um, uh, discounts at the grocery store or wherever. And you ought to find the app that is I secret shopper and see if you can secret shop in your area and go have some fun for free. Take your wife or husband on a date and surprise them. And then say, not only doing this, but we got to remember the names. When I go into Parker's, I got to remember the girl's name that, um, that served me. Of course you got to remember I'm in Georgia. So it's like Shaniqua, Shanice, Shanadra, you know, it's always got some kind of crazy name. I told Sly, I don't understand why black people got to have funny names. It just don't make sense. Uh, Sylvester is a guy that's worked for me for 26 years, and uh, he, he builds houses and stuff with me. And now, right now, he's here in Savannah's flipping. I don't understand why black people got to weird make him weird names. Your name's Sylvester. Your mom was black, right? Why'd she name you Sylvester? He goes, my family was normal. <laughs> but you, you've got to decide, what am I going to do? And if it's that secret shopping thing, then do it. If, it, if it's just changing what you do, uh, how you drive, the lights in your house, whatever it is, Money is not just the huge. Here's, here's what it is. The Bible says this. To whom much is given, much is required. If you are not good, steward, or you're not a good, and I'm, I know some of you are not Bible people, and I'm not trying to make you Bible people. I'm just trying to tell you the truth. This is good common sense. If you're not good with the little stuff and handling it, you will never be good with the big stuff. And if you want to handle the big stuff, you've got to start getting yourself right right now with the little stuff and fixing your life and fixing it up. Don't give up. Get on top of this thing and make a change in your life that does it. Make decisions that are based on truth and knowledge. Don't let somebody sell you on feeling. Oh, you can do this. Oh, you can make this happen. Oh, you can. Mm -mm. Start slow. Get some truth. Fix what you need to change. Look at your life. What is it that we need to change for our finances and do one step at a time to try to change for your future? Don't don't give up. Don't change it or don't walk away from that. And last, give others what they want, and you can have anything. I'm a firm believer, and every time I've helped somebody else have what they want and get what they want, it turns around and pays me off great dividends. I have a good friend that's trying to buy a house near me, and we spent time on the phone today uh, trying to find him. We, we, we we're getting closer and closer friends. I really enjoy his friendship, and I, you know me. Most of you that know me, I don't have really deep close friends very often. I really feel close to him. And I'm trying to help him buy a house and answer questions about what he should do and, and, and how he should do it. And I know this, that as I help him get what he wants, he will help me get what I want. 
it's a it's a great secret. I learned it as a 14 year old kid. I heard a, a guy get up on stage and speak, and he talks about his little redheaded wife and talks about all kinds of stuff. And one thing he said is, "Listen, if you give others what they want, you'll have what you want." I've changed a little bit. So if you give others what they want, you can have anything you want because it makes it possible for them to back you and for the, them to change you. And uh, by the way, that guy wrote a couple of good books called See at the Top by Zig Ziglar and, and uh, a couple more if you want to look him up. Zig Ziglar is awesome. All right. I'm going to open it up now. Hold on a second and get to everybody. I can only do questions on one side. So I'm going to open up. If you have any questions about things you could do or changes, please keep your computer muted. Um, Please complete, complete, uh, keep your computer muted unless you have a question. That way we don't hear feedback. So anybody have a question about something you have, something about money that I can try to answer your questions about money, just about money. I'm not trying to talk about real estate or anything else. But is there something you say, Gary, what would I do in this case and see if I can't help you a little bit about money and try to answer some of your money questions? Anyone? If you have a question, please ask it and I'll try to try to answer it. If you're all so smart or maybe you're scared to speak, that's OK, too. But okay, somebody says I'm not thinking long term. I absolutely agree with that. I am not working today, by the way. Um, I am not working. I'm, I spend, I want to say I spend right now about three hours of my day on the real estate that I'm doing to, to eat. And I'm spe spending about eight to 10 hours a day on the real estate that five years from right now will literally transform my life transform my children's life and transform my children's children's life. Just this week alone, we've looked at over $140 million, $140 million worth of deals. I, I want to make a change. So you, you're going to have to find the way um, that you can do it. You're going to have to find the way that you can start thinking long term. I don't care what your age is, because, listen, people live way longer sometimes right now than they think they're going to live. You need to start making a plan for a year from now, two years from now. What's that plan? How are you going to fix that plan? Somebody else, you got a question? Somebody does not have your mic muted. So if you're going to ask a question, that's great. But otherwise, please mute your mic. Yeah. Or I, I can mute it for you. I prefer you mute it, though. All right. Anybody else have a question? I'm not going to stay on here if you guys don't want to ask questions. I'm just trying to trying to help out. Hey, again. Gary. Yes, go ahead. Hey, Russ. <laughs> Russ, good. Uh, what what were the name of those apps again? Um, I secret. Hold on one second. Let me just look that up. I can tell you right now. I know it starts with an I, so I can get to the eyes. Hold on. H I I secret shop. I secret shop is uh, okay. the one that gets you like cool stuff to do near you, which is, and by the way, we did it. That's when we were in Hawaii, we did three of them. So it, it, it does, it does work in Hawaii and it's not a lot, right, thank of them, you. but they have some. And then the other one is called mile IQ. You can do a free version, but you only get 40 trips. I think uh, either a month, I think it is, it might be a week, 40 trips or something. But if you pay 295 or whatever it is, a month, then it keeps all of your mileage. So I can tell you right now. I can tell you everywhere I went, and I can actually show you a map of where I went. And it's all in history. Yeah, I have the Mile IQ app, and uh, all you need is the free version. You don't yeah. need to give them six bucks a month. No. So it's, it's plenty. Okay. Of, you don't take a lot of trips. Unfortunately, on mine, I take about fifteen trips a day. So, but it, it, it's there. Is there being recorded? Uh, will it be on the website? Are there a road? I didn't read that fast enough and somebody asked. Let me go try to find the chat. I'm not good at doing the chat. It's not usually me. Okay. Is this being recorded? Yes, it is. Will it be on the website? Mm, I don't know the answer to that. We'll have to talk to Jody to find that out. We are on the road and missed a lot. Okay. Um, whether it is or not, if you will just send me an email, I will try to make a link uh, that you can look up and you can you can listen to it and hear hear what it is again if you want to. So just shoot me an email real quick, uh, Mel, and I'll and I'll take care of you. All right, somebody else. If you don't have any questions about money, I think that's awesome. I must have been a great teacher or something. I don't know. Are all y'all just inherently wealthy? That's all I can figure. Well, I appreciate everybody being here.
Um, I thank you. Um, I, I would like to get to know some of you guys. This is Gary DeBose. Um, I'm hoping that you will learn some things that will help change your future and help change your family. And uh, I, I, won't, I, I did this webinar just simply to be good to others. Uh, if I can put it on there or I can put out where it can be linked up to, uh, I'll talk to Jody how to do that. I wish you'd share it with everybody you know that's having financial trouble, but they would just start one thing on the road to recovery. Not try to, not, you know, my daughter got in some trouble here recently and she's like, I don't want to do it. I said, baby, here's what you do. Don't pay off every credit card you have. Pay one off at a time. Figure out how to pay it down. Pay the minimum on the other ones, but pay one down. And when you get one down, look at your success and go, whoo, whoo now do another and uh, I won't give my daughter money. I don't loan my kids money. I won't buy them cars. So I'm kind of a rough, uh, rough dad. But um, um, if you know somebody that needs it, please share it and uh, try to help them too. I appreciate everybody being on here. I really do. I hope um, all of you guys will come back. We have other webinars. I've got some things coming up. I have a webinar coming up about uh, how to find the money. Uh, that will be soon. We have uh, multiple classes coming up this year. Um, one on on trailers, mobile home parks in uh uh, Missouri. We have one uh, on our normal class for deal funders, I think, here in Savannah. And then I'm doing a money class on how to find the money, how to raise the money. That, that class is $3,900. So if you're interested in those things, feel free to, to holler at me. Um, and I'd be glad to talk to you about those uh, at another time. But uh, thank everybody for being here. God bless you guys. Uh, uh, hello from everybody here in Georgia, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks. Good night, everybody.